Joining us now is Brad Panovich, the chief meteorologist at our sister station in Charlotte, North Carolina. Brad, I know that we all have been very busy in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina and North Carolina, and you guys have been especially busy there in North Carolina. First off, how are things looking there right now? Well, I'll be honest with you, in the greater Charlotte area and points east, things are much better. We had power outages, trees down. Um, we had some fatalities in Charlotte, but it's really problematic in our western counties, which our market covers the North Carolina mountains all the way up to the Virginia border. That's where things are much more dire. And the scary part, Chris, is there's some communities that are really remote that we haven't heard anything about yet. And that's not a good thing because we just don't know. Um, communication is very poor. Getting um, information in and out of there, getting supplies in and out of there has been really difficult. And the only way I can describe what's happening in the North Carolina mountains is they basically have become like islands. They are isolated communities and ridge tops and valleys that are just cut off from the rest of the world right now. While you were covering this storm, when did it become evident to you, you know, we're, we're tracking these storms and just any little shift to the east or west can make a huge difference on the impacts. When did it become evident to you that this was going to be such a dire situation, especially for Western North Carolina? I would say probably Tuesday um, because we had something happening here and this is kind of getting into uh, inside baseball a little bit for weather geeks, but we had something that's called a predecessor rain event. And for folks that don't know what that is, it's a rain event that happens 36 hours, 24 hours ahead of a tropical storm. And when that started occurring Tuesday, we knew we were going to have problems because we had anywhere from six to 12 inches of rain in the mountains even before Helene got here. And that kind of laid the groundwork for when Helene did get here on Thursday night into early Friday morning, that it just pushed everything over the top. There was no room for this water in the mountains. So we really started ramping up that this was gonna be an extreme or catastrophic event. Um, and even though we were ramping it up like that, it was still hard to visualize or for people to imagine that it could be that bad. The other thing that was, kind of that happened, especially closer to the storm getting up here was there was that little shift to the east, which increased the wind risk. So we knew the, the flood risk was going to be a problem the entire time. But when the wind risk started ramping up, that meant we were going to get a lot more trees down, a lot more power outages, and that made the flood risk even more dire because it was hard to get the message out once the power started going out. And you know, we had that predecessor rain event as well for us. We had swift water rescues here in the Atlanta area, a lot of flooding all around, but we did not have the winds as strong. We did have, we had peak wind gusts in the upper forties yeah. here, uh, but since we were on the better side of the track, we did not have as much yeah. wind, even though we did have more than a million uh, power outages here in the Georgia area. But you guys had them both. You were on the bad side of the track. Yes. And not only that rain and flooding, but then that wind in that saturated ground from that rain event the day before, it, it was just a perfect recipe for disaster for you. Yeah, unfortunately, you're exactly right. And then you throw in just the topography of Western North Carolina, pretty much all of the ridge tops on the Blue Ridge basically are perpendicular to that southeast wind, which created orographic lift and squeezed out every ounce of moisture out of the system. So the amount of rain in some of these locations, you know, we had some isolated reports of 30 to 35 inches of rain and some of the ridge tops had wind gusts to 100 miles per hour. So imagine that all happening at once and there likely were embedded tornadoes. We got a lot of reports of um, enhanced wind damage in parts of the mountains and foothills um, that there likely will be tornado damage at some point if we ever get there to do damage surveys. So it really was unfortunately the perfect storm of destruction here in the Carolinas and everything just came together at once and um, it is devastating. That's all I can tell you is as bad as you think it is or you're seeing it in, in Atlanta, I can tell you in many locations it's even worse than that. So Brad, there are many people here in our area who would like to help from your vantage point from where you are yeah. in North Carolina. I know that communication is hard, getting to these people is hard. Mm -hmm. What is the best advice for people here in Atlanta who do want to help? 
Well, I know everybody's helping now, and that really is a great thing. We actually have a ton of supplies and resources. The most difficult thing right now is logistics, getting stuff to these remote areas. So what we're doing here at our station, and which really has worked well, is we're doing Operation Airdrop. It's an organization which is um, collecting these at local airports that are in the safe areas, and then ferrying it up to these remote communities via helicopter and airplane. And right now, that seems to be the most effective way. But I will tell you that this is gonna be big story all this week. Over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna still need resources. So if you can't give or help now, it's okay because down the road, we're gonna need more and more because the infrastructure needs to be rebuilt and people are gonna be suffering for a long time. Um, so the best thing I could tell you now is money is probably the best thing because there's just nowhere to put stuff to actually get up there. And if you give money to these organizations like the Red Cross, Samaritan's Purse, Operation Airdrop, they can use that money for fuel. Uh, for trucks and to buy bulk items that they really need desperately right now. All right, Brad Panovich, thank you so much for joining us and giving us that perspective of just the, uh, the widespread nature of that damage and the need that is in North Carolina as well. And Brad, I know Helene is gonna be one of those names that people are gonna be remembering for a long time. Oh. Yeah, we, we were relating this to the 1916 Great Flood, which is known throughout the mountains of North Carolina. And this is gonna be that storm for many people. It'll be a generational defining moment for them. Brad Panovich from uh, our station in Charlotte, thank you so much.